Well, hey, you guys. So recently, I've seen a lot of chit chat on the internet about the budgeting strategy called 75 10 15 rule. So apparently, this is how the 1% handles their money. And the idea is that you save 10%, invest 15%, and use the remaining 75% for any and all spending. And I've seen a lot of these videos claiming that this method is the ultimate answer, not just for people who have recently built wealth, but it's also those who are actively working towards their money goals. And listen, I don't want to stir the pot, but as somebody who's been on Baby Step 7 for years now, I'm debt-free, paid off house, saving, investing, giving, all of it, I will say I disagree with parts of this plan. Now, there's some aspects that I understand, and there are some, you know, pretty major blind spots when it comes to this. So today I'm sharing how I agree and disagree with the 75, 10, 15 budgeting method. And stick around to the end because I'm sharing my hot takes about a time that you shouldn't be investing at all. And spoiler alert, it's a crucial part of building wealth, so you don't want to miss that. Now, before we get into the weeds on this, let's make sure that we're all on the same page about what this budget strategy means. Like I said, the idea is that 10% of your take-home pay goes into savings every single month, regardless of anything. 15% gets invested into retirement, and then 75% is what's left over for spending. And looking at this philosophy in a simple way, I can really appreciate that at least there's some points of an intentional plan, right? You're actually doing something proactively, which is great. And at the end of 2023, research found that 51% of Americans said that they were having difficulty paying their bills. When that's the reality that we're working with, having a plan is huge. But the kind of plan that you want to choose is really crucial. So now I want to unpack a couple of the blind spots that I see with the 75, 10, 15 strategy. Number one, apparently it's supposed to work for all people at any income. But that's a huge issue, in my opinion, because some people are carrying around thousands of dollars of debt. They shouldn't be doing the same thing that people are doing with a million dollar net worth. So if you make $4,000 a month, that means 3,000 is fair game to spend on what you want. And there's a lack of structure there that's kind of concerning because let's say that you're trying to hold down a $1,500 car payment every month, which is a real thing, we're seeing that on the internet. That means that there's 1,500 left for rent or mortgage, food, other costs throughout the month. And when your budget is that broad, it's a recipe for that paycheck to paycheck cycle because you don't have an intentional say on where your money's going. And before you know it, you got less than $100 left with half the month ahead of you. Or let's say that you're working with a higher paycheck and your combined household income after taxes is $150,000. Well, in a month, you'll bring home around $12,500. So 75% of that is $9,400. Now, sure, if you have a big family and your household spending you know, may come close to that amount, if you factor in mortgage and groceries, utilities, insurance, subscriptions, kids' school and activities and all of it. But if you don't have to spend $9,000 a month, why would you want that to be your goal? What if it was like, hey, there's no need to like gamify your monthly budget for aiming at 75% of that quota just because. And if you are spending that much, I would recommend getting more specifics with your expenses. So I always recommend the Every Dollar Budget. It's a budgeting app and it's great because you do get a good grasp on these little expenses throughout the month and you know where your money's going to in a very specific way. And again, spending is part of life. This is what you're going to do, but you want to be the one in the driver's seat. All right, blind spot number two. Instead of working with percentages, I always recommend working with priorities because percentages never change or adapt to your unique financial needs and your goals, which automatically can slow down your process. So instead, narrow your focus and choose the right goal for your situation. Managing money according to priority instead will ensure that you're always moving on the right trajectory and you're doing that and not just staying stagnant with the same thing. Now, the first three baby steps are a really great example of this because baby step one is you're prioritizing a $1,000 emergency fund. So regardless of anything, you're focusing on saving, okay? You're cutting out any expenses you can. You're not investing. You really are looking at, hey, we've got to get this $1,000. And this is really important because if you don't have that money saved, it can derail your process. You know, whether you, you know, have a flat tire, your kid needs stitches. So instead of aimlessly saving 
just because having a concrete goal will help you reach it faster. And then you're gonna move on to baby step two, which is paying off all of your debt. So student loans, car payments, credit cards, anything like that, you're going to attack everything but your mortgage. And then once you're debt free, you will be amazed at how much margin that you have when you don't have all those payments. And then after that, you're gonna prioritize a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. And again, this allows you to have a more substantial cushion in life, uh, which will give you even more peace. And once you hit that goal, then you switch from defense to offense. And now this is where you can contribute 15% of your income into investing. And that's baby step four. So 15% of your income will go into retirement, which means that for a while, when you're working on those first three goals, you're not investing. And some people are like, oh my gosh, Rachel, that's so terrible. But listen, you will catch up, I promise. Investing 15% of your income, you will be great. And I agree with this part of the percentage of the formula, 15% uh, when it comes to the 70, 10, 15 rule, that 15% of your money should go in to investing. And I love that, but I would do the first three baby steps before I invest. So be thinking about that again. Again, it's priorities, remember that. But once you are on baby step four, then you're good to go. Now, baby step four, five, and six can be tackled at the same time. And that's usually over a longer period of time than the first three baby steps. The first three baby steps you're gonna do pretty quickly. I mean, I want you to get $1,000 like within 30 days. People are getting out of debt completely in 18 to 24 months, and then they're saving up that emergency fund. So again, it's gonna take a couple of years, but you can knock that out. But long-term, this is where you're gonna be saving for retirement, kids' college, and then paying the house off early, which is baby steps four, five, and six. So that's gonna be a longer time period. But again, I love the idea of having a budget and knowing, hey, that I'm gonna be stretching my money out to all of these areas. But if you wanna make the maximum amount of progress, just take it one step at a time in those first three baby steps, and then the other, the rest of them, you're gonna do at the same time. All right, if you've never tried Every Dollar before, make sure to do that. You can go to everydollar.com slash Rachel, and within minutes, you can create a budget completely for free. And I teach the zero-based budget, and this is what is so important because it's putting your money in your hands and you're deciding what to do with it based on where you are financially, not just some percentages that are just out there for anyone and everyone. Your money should be tailored towards you and the budget helps you do that. And if you haven't checked out my episode on 15 practical budgeting tips, make sure to do that. All right, you guys, remember to take control of your money and create a life you love.